It's trash collection day again. You're bringing your empty garbage cans back up the driveway and I thought strikes you. What happens to the trash? It couldn't have all just disappeared. Once the garbage collection truck is filled, it heads to either the county's only active landfill or one of its three trash transfer stations. At the transfer station, the collector drops the load of trash onto a tipping floor. All residential trash is then relocated into tractor trailers for shipment to the waste energy facility, Bresco, in Baltimore City, while commercial trash is sent both in-state and out-of-state for landfilling. Anything you throw away as trash, paper products, food scraps, plastic, general household waste will be disposed of as trash. After your trash is collected, no sorting is conducted to remove recyclables from the trash. Valuable recyclables will be wasted unless you separate them from the trash and put them out for recycling collection. Most of Baltimore County's municipal solid waste goes to the waste energy facility in Baltimore City. Here trash is incinerated. Ferrous metals are extracted from the resulting ash to be recycled and steam produced by incineration is sent to the city's heating and cooling system. This steam also turns a turbine, creating electricity that is sold to the electric market. The remaining ash, 10% of the original volume, is transported back to Baltimore County and city to be landfilled. While most of the county's waste is shipped to the waste energy facility, a portion is landfilled. A modern landfill is a carefully engineered structure built into or on top of the ground. The main purpose of the design is to safely isolate the trash and any water entering the trash from seeping into and polluting the surrounding environment. Baltimore County has only one active landfill for trash located in the White Marsh area. The Eastern Sanitary Landfill Solid Waste Management Facility, or ESL, is a multi-purpose facility including a trash transfer station, landfill, and residence drop-off center for recyclables, trash, and other items. It also houses a composting site for residential yard materials. ESL is more than half full. At the current average rate of landfilling, ESL may be able to accept trash until the year 2054. ESL opened in 1982 and is comprised of a total of 375 acres. However, only 195 acres are available to bury trash. The landfill consists of 13 sections called phases. One phase at a time is prepared to accept trash. Phase 1 through 9 are filled, while Phase 10 is currently accepting trash. Phase 10 will be 192 feet at its peak, the landfill's highest point, and 68 feet above sea level at its base, totaling 124 feet of vertical space to bury trash, the greatest of anywhere on the site. Phase 10 covers 14 acres, which is the equivalent of more than 10 football fields. What does it take to build a phase of the landfill before any trash is buried there? Once the existing soil is excavated and graded to the permitted level, the complex work to turn this very large hole into a waterproof area begins. The bottom layer, placed on top of the prepared soil foundation, is a geosynthetic clay liner that acts as a shell to prevent any migration of contaminated liquid, otherwise known as leachate, into the ground. Leachate is created when rainwater comes into contact with waste. The leachate and liquid that's within the buried trash percolate down through the landfill, collecting contaminated substances from the garbage along the way. On top of the clay liner is a thick 50 milliliter flexible PVC geo membrane, which extends over the bottom and up the sides of the landfill. Imagine a very thick swimming pool liner. 
On top of these liners is a non-woven 16 ounce geotextile material. This protects the PVC liner from the next layer up, 6 inches of crushed stone. This layer contains a system of perforated collection pipes designed to collect the leachate, which is then pumped to the sanitary sewer system and directed to a wastewater treatment plant. Another non-woven geotextile separator is placed on top of the stone layer. This material keeps the next layer up 12 inches of specialized soil from getting into the stone layer and restricting leachate flow. Now the landfill is ready to accept trash. The first four feet of trash, otherwise known as the fluff layer, is strictly residential. The fluff layer helps protect the bottom layers of the liner from being punctured when larger items are crushed by heavy equipment. So what happens when the trash arrives at the Eastern Sanitary Landfill? The first stop is the scale house. Trucks drive over scales, precisely measuring the weight of the trash of which they are about to dispose. Some trucks may be directed to the transfer station and some may be directed to the working face of the landfill where trash is buried. Residents may also be sent to the working face depending on the vehicle type and nature of material. Once a vehicle empties its load at the working face, front end dozers spread the trash out for very heavy vehicles called compactors to drive over. Compactors crush the trash to reduce volume. At the end of each day, the trash is covered with a uniform layer of six inches of soil. Material in the landfill is tightly compacted, creating an oxygen-starved environment. Therefore, anaerobic bacteria, meaning bacteria without oxygen, break down the organic material. This process creates a gaseous byproduct that is 50% methane and 50% carbon dioxide. Methane is a flammable greenhouse gas, dangerous to the Earth's climate. Methane is 30 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. From 1982 to 1997, methane gas passively vented into the atmosphere either through the top ground surface or through a perimeter landfill gas vent system. In 1997, a landfill gas collection system was constructed for phases one through a portion of phase six. The system expanded as each new phase was constructed. Collected gas during this period was combusted and flared. In 2006, a landfill gas conversion operation opened at ESL to use the methane to produce electricity and sell the product to the energy grid. A blower creates a vacuum that pulls the methane through a perforated pipe in the landfill. There are approximately 142 wellheads that control the vacuum. The gas is routed to three internal combustion engines that use the methane as fuel. These engines are used to turn a generator that produces electricity. At times, this process generates up to 3 megawatts electricity, enough to power 1900 homes for a year. It also reduces the amount of greenhouse gases that would otherwise be generated by the equivalent of 2400 cars annually. Any excess methane is combusted and flared. When a phase of the landfill is completely filled, it is capped with a waterproof liner and a thick layer of soil to prevent rain from entering the material. This decreases the quantity of the leachate produced. However, even when the landfill is totally filled and closed, it must be monitored indefinitely to ensure it does not contaminate the environment. So next time you're carrying your empty garbage cans up the driveway, think about where your trash really went. It didn't simply disappear.